Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lori. If you are new here, I am a family nurse practitioner and I currently work in the urgent care space. So today we are going to talk in the Tygo. I had a mother that brought her six-year-old son in with complaint of a rash to the forearm. The mother stated that she noticed a rash approximately two days prior. She noticed that today when she woke up, it was sores. She said some of it was crusting, some of it was oozing. She also noticed, noticed it on the leg. She did say she used some over-the-counter hydrocortisone and not helping much. The child is complaining about a little bit of itching, but nothing severe. And the mother did say that they went camping. So the first thing I thought about when she said camping was, did the child get bitten by a tick? Because a lot of times when you go camping and you go in the woods, you get these tick bites. And then when you get a tick bite, you're concerned about Lyme disease. But when I looked at the rash, it did not have that presentation. So I immediately ruled that out that it was a possible tick bite. So this is my examination. So the child denied any fever, denied any nausea or vomiting, denied any pain anywhere, but did complain about some itching, but nothing crazy. I did notice that there was also a rash to the right posterior leg and the left forearm. The rash on the arm, some of it was partially crusted and others were oozing and it was almost like a honey crusting on the rash. So these were a couple of my differential diagnoses. So herpes, chicken pox, scabies, and impetigo was part of my differential diagnoses. Just because these type of rashes present with um, blisters and erythema and uh, sometimes crusting. Herpes I immediately crossed off of my list. I crossed chicken pox off of the list because chicken pox, the rash tend to be secondary and the rash tend to occur first on the back and the belly. You tend to see fever first with kids with chicken pox. Scabies I crossed off because Scabies rash, a lot of times it starts in between the fingers and you see those burrow tracks because of the mites that you are bitten by. Also, scabies is an intense itch. I actually had a patient that I diagnosed with scabies. I'm gonna do a separate video about that. My diagnosis was impetigo. And one of the big reasons why impetigo was my diagnosis was because of the honey crusting rash that was presented. Let me first say that diagnosing impetigo, you don't need any lab or any testing to diagnose impetigo. It's truly diagnosed by assessment. I will also say dermatology is definitely not my strongest suit. And when in doubt, send your patient to a dermatologist. I've had a lot of different rashes that came into the clinic and I did not know what it was. So impetigo per up-to-date, you guys know I love up-to-date. Impetigo is a contagious superficial bacterial infection and it's observed most frequently in children two to five years old. Now don't forget that older children and, and adults can be affected. In fact, this was the second time I diagnosed impetigo. The first time I diagnosed impetigo, it was in a guy, a young man, and he was 28 years old. Um, the infection usually occurs in warm, humid condition and is easily spread by a close contact. Risk factors are there on your screen as follows. Okay, so there is actually three types of impetigo. There is non-bolus, bolus, and enchyma. Uh, the non-bolus one is the one that is most common. It's also called crust impetigo and this is the one that begins with tiny blisters and then you eventually see um, it bursts and leave patches so let's talk treatment your treatment of choice is going to be your topical agent and your topical agent is going to be your mupirocin which is Bactroban and that is a ointment that you would apply three times a day for five days in the urgent care setting I tend to give the Bactroban and the Keflex, Ciflexin. Honestly speaking, a lot of times the Bactroban by itself does not work. A lot of times the family is going to ask you, when can the child return to school? Children can actually return to school 
24 hours after you begin to start the antimicrobial treatment. Make sure that the kiddos are washing hands as much as possible. The universal precaution, number one universal precaution, good hand hygiene. So make sure they're washing their hands. I know it's hard for little kids. They touch stuff, they put stuff in their mouth. And this is just how it spread. It's through contact. So that is it guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye guys.